All right, I believe I have Christina on the line right now. Um, let me uh, let me grab her and give us have her give us the skinny on uh, a radioactive uh, tsunami headed our way. Hello, Christina. Hey, Darren. How are things going? Okay. Yeah. Are you? Um, lots lots to do today, though. <laughs> I know, I know. I can hear in your voice already. I can hear in your voice already. Um, well, you know, tomorrow is supposed to be cold shutdown day, um, from from what Tesla has been saying, and I've been gearing up for that, and and my uh, rebuttal that I'm putting together, and then I I came across this article this morning about the uh, stuff that started washing up in Vancouver, and it actually happened about two weeks ago. Can you, hey Chris, so, can you, can you uh, tell us what does cold shutdown day mean? Well, cold shutdown is. Uh, it is a term used in a, in a properly functioning nuclear reactor when it's uh, reached a, a wave, uh, an area where it's stabilized in terms of temperature, the, the cooling. Uh, but that's a situation that is usually in a, a reactor that has been uh, destroyed by an earthquake and, and one where the fuel has been completely melted out of it. And the gauges that they have that are, are monitoring those, those reactors or what's left of them in, in Fukushima Half of the gauges don't work, and they're measuring inside that vessel where the control rod used to be. So it, it's a complete myth and, and very misleading to be saying that they've reached some kind of cold shutdown status. And that's what they, they're, um, they're gearing up to announce tomorrow. Hmm. Okay. So basically they're gearing up for a big load of bullshit. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, and I'm sure it will get picked up by all kinds of news sites and, and you know, CNN and BBC will run that story and people will catch it and say, oh, okay, everything must be fine over there then. Yeah, I was just going to say that. I was just going to say that it seems to me like they're trying to uh, to put, like, the, a nail in the coffin as a finality on Fukushima. Oh, look, we're, we're doing this and, you know, just letting you guys know what's going over here. No big deal. Go back to what you're doing. Yeah. Well, we've we've got a, a, a real mess that's uh, that's going to be hitting the shores and, and appears to be already hitting the shores of the west coast. Um, a couple weeks ago, a, a Russian trawler came across a boat from Fukushima that was floating um, quite a few miles still off off the coast, and they have done projections based on ocean currents and so forth that they weren't expecting the tsunami debris from Japan to hit the coast for another year or two. And for some reason, it's, it's already separated. You know, a lot of it has to do with the weight of the material and, and the buoyancy of the materials. You know, lighter uh, things like um, foam and, and plastics are, are going to get put over here sooner than, than heavier things like cars and houses. But it's all coming. And there's been no effort whatsoever to contain it while it's still offshore. Well, now, you, you don't have to make an effort to contain anything that doesn't exist. So I don't know what you're talking about. Well, you know, in <laughs> NASA, we, we can, you know, spot galaxies, uh, you know, millions of light years away, but we can't see where this stuff is and, and make some kind of plan to deal with it. And, you know, I've been... Uh, it's been in the back of my mind, um, and I've been wanting to, to look into it further, but, you know, now it's, it's going to be here. And they are already telling police departments to get Geiger counters because yep. what they're telling citizens to do on these coastal areas is do not touch anything. Just call the police when you find something and have them come out and deal with it. And, you know, just telling the police to... to start taking Geiger counters over this stuff. You know, what about hazmat suits? What about training for handling radioactive materials? This stuff is going to need to be cataloged. A lot of it is going to be personal belongings that are probably very important to people who lost relatives and so forth in Japan. Um, and, and anything that is radioactive is going to need to be disposed of. If it's not just decontaminated, but disposed of in radioactive landfills. There's no plan to deal with any of this. Wow. Right, right. And, and so, well, let me ask you first. Where did you, uh, where did you hear about the police uh, are, are expected to start having Geiger counters with them over the, out there? In the that was reported on any 
Union. Right. Oh, okay. Um, you know, it'll be it'll be interesting, interesting to see. Unfortunately, we'll probably see it. Uh, how many of those police uh, willingly do it? And, and I, I would love to hear the training they get and what they're going to be told about the radiation they're going to be exposing themselves to. You know, be, because they're, I'm sure they're going to be told a story. And, uh, you know, I'm just wondering how many of them will, will actually wake up to the fact. Uh, because as horrible as Fukushima is, and it is horrible, I mean, when you really sit down and start to contemplate, I'm sure you, you do that 24-7. Um, it, to me, it's something that can really, really wake people up. Uh, whether or not that's too late, uh, I don't know. Uh, but uh, I think we need to, I would love to see us see a, a way to infuse the, the awareness of what's going on with Fukushima, how it's affecting us, if we could get that into the Occupy movement. Because that's something that every movement, Tea Party, Occupy, whatever you want to call it, you know, as people, as human beings, we could all rally around. And that's something that divide and conquer techniques really wouldn't be able to penetrate, in my in my opinion. Um, so I would, I, I, I would like to, for everybody, you know, to, to try to that in there. If you go to these demonstrations, if you know people in Occupy uh, and Tea Parties, you know, you got to make people aware of this because maybe those movements will bring awareness to it and maybe it'll wake more people up, you know. Instead of people bitching about bankers, which believe me, plenty of, plenty to bitch about there. Um, but, I, I, like I said, this is something where no divide and conquer technique can, that I can foresee could, could, uh, could, 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 could have an effect there, you know. Well, you know, it, it's not just the, the stuff washing up and having someone to deal with it. It seems like that should be more of a, a homeland security or, or an EPA problem, really. Um, but the contamination of beaches as a result of it, if the stuff is radio, radioactive, and I don't know how it could be, it's been floating around in a, in a soup of, of uh, particles for the last nine months that we know is 50 million times higher in norm, you know, next to normal levels of, of what we usually found, find in the ocean. You know, fish are contaminated. This, this stuff is going to have particles all over it. And everything that's blown over and rained out onto the stuff is right. going to be mixed in. Once it hits the beaches, you know, then the sand is contaminated. And you can, I can foresee that a lot of these beaches are going to need to be shut down if they start finding measurements that are, are dangerous to human health, um, what they'll probably do is just up the levels like Japan did. Sure. Want, you know. Sure, and, 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 and make it a militarized zone like you've done the Gulf. Uh, you know, they'll kick people out. Uh, they'll, they'll do all, all kinds of um, all kinds of cover-ups. But, you know, you got to think, I mean, I can't, I can't picture them closing the beaches down because think of the repercussions economically for that. And if they do that, that's definitely going to scare the hell out of people. And I'm all for scaring the hell out of people. I really am. I am. I am all about scaring the hell out of you if it gets you to wake up to what you're being exposed to. I have no problem with that. Call me a fear monger while well, you want to. I don't really care. But um, I mean, think about the repercussions. If they start, I mean, California is known for its coastline. You know, if they start shutting all that down. I, you know, I, I mean, what do you think? Do you think that? I mean, well, it's, it's going to be a huge, you know, public health risk. And, yeah, I mean, there's, there's going to be fallout from tourism and, and so forth. I mean, you know, the main reason a lot of people go to California is, is to go to the ocean. Yeah. I, used to, live, I used to live right up the Pacific Coast Highway in Cal Southern California. I mean, I, I'm, I'm familiar with the beaches in Southern California. But they're great. You know, it's great. Uh, but, yeah. and that they are... It's just, a sh you know, it's just unbelievable that that this is being allowed to happen. Um, do you do you know where this where this debris is? I mean, are you expecting this with it to, to start landing in uh, you know highly visible beaches? Let's say like uh, like Laguna Beach and uh, and and Black Beach and uh, Huntington Beach in California. All these places, like within a, in a week or two weeks or a couple of days or. Well, they, they estimate the, the size of the debris field is equal to about the, the area of the state of Texas. That's a big state. Mm -hmm. And the way the currents move, the simulations, if you go on YouTube, you can actually look at a simulation of, of where this debris field is.
field is and where they expect it to hit. And it looks like that the uh, Pacific Northwest is where it's going to hit first. And then the way the currents move is they actually circle, they go down south. And when they get around the area of um, San Francisco or the, the Middle Coast, Santa Barbara, they start to um, kind of swirl back around towards Hawaii. Uh, they haven't found anything that I'm aware of around Hawaii yet. Uh, but the way the currents cur go, it would have taken it from Japan north of Hawaii and then circled back around clockwise before it got there. And, and there are um, some surf organizations that are trying to organize volunteer efforts, at least in the state of Hawaii, and, and I believe that they, they are um, also trying to organize some, some efforts where citizens can can go out and uh, go on these expeditions to, to look for stuff. Um, but but our side but on that, I haven't heard any any kind of formal plans from anybody. And and the, you know the Coast Guard has been on top of this. I mean they they install nets to protect people from from sharks in Australia. You know they could have put nets up in these areas to, to catch some of this before it comes on shore. And I mean, contained it while it's out there, rather than letting it come inland. Right, but, but like you said, no official effort uh, seems to be in the works whatsoever. So, so what would people, if, if, if regular people, which I'm a big believer in regular people power and fixing things, you know, I, I think we should all act, act like grown-ups and stop stop waiting for you know our daddy and mommy government or official agencies to come take care of us. That's a whole psychological thing right there, needing some type of parental entity to, to fall back on. But we're not going to get into that. But, um, but what, what kind of thing will these people be exposed to? I mean, do you have any idea what, kind of, what the levels would be like at that point? It, are, are, will there be more radioactivity because it's been in the water? Will there be less? No idea. We're not going to know until stuff starts washing up and people start measuring it. And I would suggest anyone who comes across any of this debris, um, to take a picture of it, at the very least, but leave it alone otherwise not to touch it. Uh, there is a, a guy on the internet who um, who is obsessed with ocean currents and things that wash ashore, and he's actually set up a page where people can uh, log in and, and uh, upload photographs of stuff that they find so he can do some kind of, you know, mass track where these things are landing. And, and it's if these barrels washed up two weeks ago, I mean, it could be any time. And, and oceanographers have been warning since they found that, that boat, the Russian trawler found the boat, that it would be coming in soon. And that was a few weeks ago, and I just I hadn't heard anything else about it until that article got posted on any news today. What, was, where did it, was, was this an abandoned boat they found with a bunch of, like, radioactive yeah. mutants on it, or was this just, uh, just abandoned? It was just nobody on it? I don't... I, yeah, I don't think they they measured any radioactive levels. I don't think they had the equipment for it. It was just a, a fishing trawler or something that came across it. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I mean, if people have divers in that area, they can they can check the stuff and then you know call the police or the appropriate agencies to deal with it. Yeah, I I. You know, I'm 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 waiting on uh, my Geiger counter. It's still not here yet, um, and it rained today. I'm kind of pissed. I don't have it with me, but um, uh, I think it's going to be. You know, after I had you on the program uh, like a week or two weeks ago, whenever it was, you know, I, I think you're exactly right. I mean, anybody who can get their hands on a Geiger counter, you know, this is probably going to be something you're going to want to have access to for the remainder of your natural life now. Right. You know, I mean, so... This effort is going to need to be ongoing. The releases are ongoing. Right. And at any time, what's going on in Fukushima right now could get a million times worse. And that would that would happen if the, the, there was some kind of hydrovolcanic explosion, which um, even the architect of Reactor 3 has said is inevitable. Yes. Um, or if the that fuel pool in Reactor 4... Um, falls to the ground and the contents go out. They would have to evacuate Tokyo at that time. And then the releases would just be unreal. We, we would probably have to shelter indoors. 